Hi, I am a 65-year-old Australian-born male. So when did I suddenly become a bigot and a racist? I believe in New World civilised culture. I am proud of my history and heritage. I believe that Australia is a great and shining example of what a democratic nation born of freedom can become. I am proud of the Australian flag and all that it stands for. I am proud to have our nation stand beside the USA, Canada, New Zealand and others as great shining examples of English-speaking New World nations. We are, I believe, great Western civilised democracies that stand for liberty and freedom for all. So when did I suddenly become a bigot and a racist? I think it must have been about the time that Prime Minister Paul Keating tried to turn Australia into a banana republic. Wasn't that about the time, from memory, that a school subject began being taught called political correctness? And wasn't that about the same time that teachers stopped teaching kids how to add up, multiply, divide and actually spell words correctly? I think it was some time in the 1980s, but I can't be sure of the exact date. I do know that it became very uncool to be a good old Aussie boy. This must have been when I slowly turned from being a good bloke and a nice young man into a bigot and a racist. This transformation wasn't instant. It actually took years, even decades, for the transformation to fully take shape. Today, I'm a fully-fledged bigot and a racist. I know that because my nephew, who lives in Canada and only visits here about once a year, tells me so in no uncertain terms. The man is a much better educated man than I am, or well, so he says, because he not only says that I'm a bigot and a racist, but also I am ignorant. So it must be true. I didn't start off being a bigot and a racist. I was just a kid in school. The kids in my class at my school seem to have parents who came from places all over the world. Why? Because this was the 1950s and Australia was right in the middle of the post-Second World War immigration boom. The school I went to was in the Northern Territory, so there were plenty of Aboriginal families that sent their kids to the school too. This was Australia. So there were no segregation and separations, and we all got on just fine. Later I moved to a bigger town, and in that town there were about 70 different nationalities. Some of these ethnic groups had sporting teams and social clubs. To name a few, there was the Irish Club, the Finnish Club, the Concordia Club for Germans, and the traditional Australian clubs such as the RSL. It made no difference which one you went to. There were no special restrictions for membership. For example, I can remember going to see Kamal, a Sri Lankan Australian entertainer, performing at the Concordia Club, a German club, with my best friend who was born in Indonesia and whose parents were Dutch. So what part of all this makes me a bigot and a racist? Do you think that my upbringing was somehow strange and different from those around me? Not at all. If you were not born here and came from another country in the post-war immigration boom, the chances are that you would have had a far more interesting and colourful story to tell than the one I'm telling you here. Believe me. So what part of my upbringing and history and heritage makes me an ignorant bigot and a racist, well the only thing that seems to stand out is that I stand up for traditional Australian values. In other words, I'm not a member of the Australian socialists, the Marxist extremists or the left-wing Greens. I do not support the extreme viewpoints of anarchists and unionists such as the CMFEU. At the same time, I do support those that back the traditional values and democracy of Australia. I believe that if you come to this country, you should respect the nation that you have been chosen to become part of and help contribute to the culture and our culture and heritage. You should strive to help Australia to be a better place rather than attempt to tear it down and tear down what we have already built. I believe that Australians tolerate, integrate and assimilate with anyone who chooses to be part of Australia. But if you come here and choose to attack, undermine and destroy what we have built, then you are not the kind of person we want to be a part of our nation. You are undermining the nation from within. I see that as aggressive intolerance and that is unacceptable. According to Kent Bailey, a man I consider to be an Australian hero, in a speech he delivered in 2014. And when they come to Australia, they take an oath, an oath of allegiance. And I want to read that to you. It's only about five lines. 
This is the oath of allegiance that most of you will never have heard, and they pledge this. From this time forward, under God, I pledge my loyalty to Australia and its people, whose democratic beliefs I share, whose rights and liberties I respect, and whose laws I will uphold and obey. As an Australian, I believe that no matter where you come from or what nationality you were before you arrived, this simple and short oath of allegiance outlines the terms and conditions that allows you to be part of our nation and all that we stand for as a nation. These are old-fashioned beliefs and are in direct conflict with the brave new world revolutionary ideas put forward by the Marxists, the Australian Socialists and the left-wing Greens or those that believe in political correctness. How dare we ask anyone to pledge allegiance to our nation and its people? Only an ignorant racist and a bigot would ever ask for such a thing. And in a world of political correctness, or more correctly, political corruptness and Twitter speak, it seems that this is exactly why I am an ignorant bigot and a racist. What I want for my grandchildren and the future generations is to have the kind of Australia that I grew up in. A nation where all people are tolerated, accepted and welcomed no matter where they come from or whatever culture and ethnic heritage they may have. You are welcome as long as you don't try to change Australia from a great Western democratic society into something that it is not. We are Australians. We should be tolerant. But there are those that would turn our nation from a tolerant democracy into an intolerant dictatorship. Those that call me ignorant and a racist and a bigot are those that would choose to shut me up and refuse to allow me the right to speak at all. That is intolerance. These are the same people who invite immigration from ethnic groups and religions that are intolerant and are incompatible with our traditional values. I might be an ignorant racist and a bigot, but the people who call me that are intolerant. I believe the only thing that we cannot afford as a nation is to be tolerant of intolerance itself. For our nation and for the sake of all new world civilised nations, we need to make a stand. We need to make a stand for our children. We need to make a stand for our grandchildren. We need to make a stand even for our great-grandchildren. And we need to stand up for all past, present and future generations of Australians. Even if it means we will be labelled as ignorant bigots and racists, we need to make a stand. Like it or not, believe it or not, accept it or not, this is Australia and it is our nation. Respect it for what it is and don't try to change it into something that it is not.